They say, if you want to tell a story right, you gotta start at the beginning. Oh dear, wait. In 1992, Bruce Timm and Paul Denny spearheaded the best thing any humans have ever made. This feel this feels too too early. This is probably too the beginning. In short, Batman the Animated Series was an awesome portrayal of Batman if you're into classy 1940s suits and great performances from its loaded cast of voice actors. I think for a lot of people, this will always be gold standard Batman. The show also introduced the world to a new character named Harley Quinn, aka the best Batman character. Hey, I, I don't make the rules, Mr. J. Fast forward 24 years to the birth of one smoldering and tumultuous Batfleck. In 2016, you have the fresh debut of Ben Affleck Batman hitting the silver screen in Batman v Superman, a movie people definitely have opinions on. Like bad history is pretty stressful and clowns. Oh! Look, look, look. Square up! Also, he's like the seventh Batman at this point in time, and his Batman is all about murder, I guess. I... You make me mistake, I will f kill you. Ha ha, just that Batman shit. On the business side of things, the film studio was attempting with middling success to replicate the success of the Marvel franchise model and building a universe of characters. By the Batman transitive property of franchise building, WB's gonna need a Joker to put too fine a point on it. Which is where the weird sprouts weirder. Beginning in 2014, David Ayer, writer and director of End of Watch and Fury, respectively, is offered the job to write and direct a Suicide Squad movie. Itself loosely based on the comic of the same name, WB's trying to build out the DC roster where honestly villains are as much of a comic attraction as the heroes. Killer Croc fans, where you at? WB puts together a killer cast of villains, including one Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, the first time the character has ever appeared in live action. Jared Leto subsequently gets the job of playing Mr. J to be Harley's other half. Also, he does like a, a photo shoot that um, doesn't, uh, one sec, doesn't go over well with, let me find it. Oh! people. Suicide Squad is a troubled production to say the least, and if you want more information as to why, please check out The Art of Editing and Suicide Squad by Dan Olson. It's my go-to yeah. YouTube comfort food. I watched that video like 40 times in 2020. Everybody needs something, you know? This is Katana. She's got my back. She can cut all you in half with one sword stroke, just like mowing the lawn. I would advise not getting killed by her. Her sword traps the souls of its victims. I'm here for revenge. Okay, sure. Alan, what's my character again? You're the doorman. I am exactly the right age for watching Batman the Animated Series after school. I was 10 when that show started airing, and oh my god, please don't do the math, oh no. A lot of trying to build a huge film franchise is just speculative business stuff. You sign multi-picture deals for actors to get their own spin-off films. A lot of those films never get made, and sometimes, uh, Aquaman happens. Approaching release, Will Smith has a sequel spinoff in motion, Margot Robbie has a sequel spinoff in motion, Suicide Squad has its own sequel discussion happening, and then you know, uh... But did you know? Suicide Squad is the 70th highest grossing movie of all time in America. Suicide Squad made more money than Iron Man. The world is upside down. Given the polarizing response the film got, most of those side projects fizzled out over time with two notable exceptions. 
However, based on the performance and reception of Batman v Superman Suicide Squad and a surgically altered Justice League, things started changing. WB started rebooting the world of Batman while some of the Snyderverse plates were still in the air, a continuity that was further complicated in the future by I will f kill you. Warner Brothers subsequently announces a new Batman continuity with one Robert Pattinson fully ignoring my video which is just, I mean, you know, you know what hurts? Todd Phillips also releases a Joker movie starring Joaquin Phoenix in 2019 though I assume that movie isn't connected to any existing continuity so let's just move on. 2019, how young we were. Baby birds. Also, I guess for background, Birds of Prey is a group of crime-fighting-ish women within the DC universe. Look, it's like a whole thing. Also, it was a WB show all the way back in the fictional time of 2002. Those of a caped crusader, Batman, half meta human. She has taken up her father's mantle, and under joining her in this struggle, Oracle, who was once Batman's protege. It ran for one season. Which brings us right round to February 2020, a land where truly nothing matters. I'm your host, Malcolm McDowell. Birds of Prey is dynamite. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended. That you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme no more yielding than a dream. Birds of Prey is a 2020 film starring Rosie Perez where she plays a character originally from the animated Batman series. Okay, uh, I'm being told um, Birds of Prey actually has two characters originally from the animated series in it, so I, I don't know. Oh! Birds of Prey is a 2020 film starring Margot Robbie as the titular Harleen Francis Quinzel, former doctor and contemporary sociopath. A movie very specifically about a woman emancipating herself, psst, it was in the title, from the clown prince of clown crime. A movie both literally and figuratively about a character raging against the system that contains her. This is not subtle. This is extremely not subtle. This movie is Harley Quinn, edited, spoken, and acted as if from Harley's recollection of events. Huntress talks like Harley imagines she does. Do you know who I am? Which is to say openly psychopathic and vengeance obsessed. <laughs> but seriously folks, if I have to start roasting 1990s action hero movie tropes, I'm gonna be here all day. <laughs> Christina Hodson, the writer on Birds of Prey, wrote Bumblebee right before this film. That movie had a ton of heart. I like it. Gold star. John Cena. Whoa, what a dish. Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn was directed by Kathy Yen, a director who picked up a lot of love for her previous film, Dead Pigs, a 2018 comedy drama inspired by real life events. And I didn't think I could do this movie. I mean, I had just finished my first feature. I was just starting to get into the system and figure out what I wanted to do next. And then I read this script and it was like, love it first read. And Birds was shot by Matthew Libatique. I'll just, I'll just scroll the list. It'll save us. Maddie's kind of a big deal. By all accounts, All Involved had an absolute blast making this movie. It's exceptionally, immeasurably weird just for the sake of doing so. The stakes of this movie are a breakfast sandwich, and it's shot beautifully. Wait, is Birds of Prey John Wick? 
taught a little bit of judo, a little bit of jiu-jitsu, a little bit of karate. Okay, that sentence was way more true than I thought it was going to be. Did it? Did anyone else know that Birds of Prey is John Wick? Um, also, it's a movie where Harley fires glitter grenades at uh, the police. Cinema! There's like dichotomies or whatever, I guess. Brave. In the prologue for the film, Harley breaks up with Mr. J. They break up in animation form, so the film's runtime can be spent on what it should be. Harley crashing a truck into the chemical factory where her put met to announce her independent presence in the DCEU. Boom! Also, she got drunk and then broke an asshole's legs and then took her independent spender all the way to blowing up a major piece of Batman mythology. Sorry, I said that wrong. What I mean is Batman mythology. This is where it all began, Puddy. It's the place where they met. Basically, by the end of this, everyone in Gotham is after her for some reason or another. Harley's alone, like alone alone, like oops now you're being tortured alone. This movie does not go good for her. Deep down, all she wants is real friends, people to get margaritas with. But it is not to be. The reality of Harley being on her own is immediately apparent. She can't be her normal, awful self. That her downward spiral is sort of punctuated by her character disassociating a dance number into the film. This film absolutely has rules for its universe. They just happen to be Harley's rules. And at last, we get to Ewan McGregor as Roman Sionis, AKA the Black Mask. Comically speaking, he's the guy who's all about torture and cutting people's skin off and shit. It's fun. Humans having fun. He gets to blow up at the end. You know what? Good for him. I dig the hell out of what this movie is doing. The purposeful first half pieces together this larger problem, slowly turning the screws on Harley and her friends. And then you open up a for-profit crime-fighting organization with your new friends who will share margaritas with you. I know this film wasn't everyone's cup of tea, but it was a perfect comic book movie to me. It actually did something different than other comic book movies, and it wasn't afraid to be its own authentic self. And as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck, now to scape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long. Else the puck a liar called. So, Good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends. I didn't set out to make a big episode out of this film. When I saw the movie originally, right before we all went to, um... The Dark Place. I joked about this movie being John Wick already, but it speaks pretty directly about catharsis and vengeance. Psychologically speaking, vengeance rarely brings the catharsis we hope for. You hear that, John? I think Birds of Prey's very existence is a miracle. It used an improbable opportunity to artfully and entertainingly say something from a clear and considered perspective. A movie about wronged people coming to terms with a bad world and doing the right thing anyway. Okay, wait, hang on. I don't mean to make that sound bigger than it is. In this case, the right thing is not slicing a child open to get your humongous jewel back. Okay, time in. I mean, it's a pretty low bar in a movie where a lot of people do not pass over that bar. You hear that dreamy and misguided Christmas Cena? Goofy movie, but here's a real truth and it's coming in hot. You give into toxic behavior for long enough, it's not so easy to walk away from anymore. Even Harley Quinn has lines that she won't cross. Kind of profound when you consider that the villains of this movie literally cut people's faces off. A pretty hard R-rated superhero movie about learning to be a better person one step at a time. I think Birds of Prey was a triumph. And before we close up shop for the day, I want to talk about the Snyder Cut for a second. I'll probably never get the opportunity to otherwise. And most of what I'm going to say is hugely positive, so please stop typing your dissertation down below. 
I find Zack's vision of DC heroes as the Mount Olympus gods of the modern era to be awesome and kinda clever. I think brick shithouse Batman makes sense in this universe. If Superman could take down a room of 20 people with automatic weapons and Wonder Woman could do the same, then Batman should be able to do that as well. Wonder Woman's a god, Superman's a god, Aquaman's a god, Batman has to step up, hence Brick Shithouse Batman. His arc in Batman v Superman is learning not to become the villain because he loves killing so much. How did you say that name? It's his mother's name. Oh, I'm the villain. Oh shit. Good. Oh, oh beans. Oh beans, I did it again. <laughs> oh Oops. crap. Oh shoot. I became what I always feared. Can I let my parents down? Whoops. Yeah, they died for this by the way, you jackass. The original theatrical version of Justice League unambiguously and fundamentally did not understand this point. Just like a bat. I dig it. Modern gods. This is not subtle. I'm glad Ray Fisher's performance is being enjoyed by the world. It's extremely long and contemplative because this is goodbye. I'm glad he got to say goodbye his way, but I hate that toxic and disgusting behavior is what got us here. Movies are for everyone, not just you. I think if the Snyder Cut and Birds of Prey and soon to join them James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, if these are the ultimate expressions of the Snyderverse, then I'm really glad it existed. And if the last two years has taught me anything, nothing matters. It's fine. Just try to enjoy yourself when you can. Birds of Prey is dynamite because it blew the whole thing up. That was the end of the episode, but quickly before we go, our house is currently being rebuilt. We had to take out a pretty sizable loan to do so. 2021 is a weird year, just so yeah. We also run our own merch store because we want people to have, you know, nice stuff. We just got a new shirt in that I am very excited about. We also just restocked pretty much the whole site, so old favorites are very much in stock. All purchases are heavily and greatly appreciated. We're hanging in there. Okay, I mean with them credits though.